Hey guys, it's Landon Blake from Refine Horizons, and in this video, I'm going to show you how we do our uh, what we call our proposal workload forecast. It's a business management tool, a little bit of a money management tool, kind of a hybrid. And I can't remember who taught this to me, but I think it was Dylan Crawford at Odell Engineering. Um, I can't remember for sure, but I want to give him credit because I think he's the guy that taught me how to do this. So. This is basically a tool that uh, gives you an idea of how much work you've got coming in for your team, how many weeks of work you got coming in for your team based on the proposals you have out the door and your confidence level in those proposals. And it's, it's just an estimate, right? Like this isn't a crystal ball. I can't see the future, but you know, it's a very rough guide that gives you an idea of either if you're, if you're short on work, you know, if, if, if you're going to run out of work, or if you got too much work and you're gonna and you're gonna burn your people out or miss deadlines, and so it's kind of a it's a rough gauge of that. And uh, anyways, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys how this works. Um, this is something we try and update a couple times a week here at my company, Redefine Horizons. Uh, we're not always as good about that as we should be, but we try. Um, and it, it, one of the reasons this tool is important is um, you know because this, this tool is looking ahead 30 days, right? So somewhere between 30 and 60 days, it's helping you kind of peer into the future a little bit to see what you've got coming. And uh, so it's helpful because you, you get caught up in kind of the day-to-day -day whirlwind and then you're not, you're not paying attention to that. So it's a, it's a tool that forces you to look ahead a little bit. Sorry, I got some sirens. Sirens going by, sorry. It's a tool that forces you to look ahead a little bit and then... Uh, you know, one of the things we, we do here at Redefine Horizons that not a lot of other companies do is, uh, you know, we try and keep our turnaround time to two weeks or less on almost everything we do. And um, so what, what that requires partly is that our price go up and down as, as our amount of work goes down, so up and down. So um, when we get busier, we raise our prices. Um, and what that means is we only we only work for people that are in a hurry and have a sense of urgency, right? And still they're willing to pay that price. When we're busy, and um, it just it doesn't always work out that cleanly because <laughs> we do have some clients that we have uh, really good relationships with, and and uh, they get on our schedule no matter no matter what our workload's like. But uh, we do also get a lot of I don't I don't know what you call them kind of one time projects um, that just kind of drop in our lap, and uh, and so we price those. Those kind of one-time projects where we don't have a, an existing relationship with the client, uh, th those might vary in price. It could be 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%, depending on how busy we are. So in order to, to know how to price, how aggressively to price the work, uh, you know, there's certain minimums we don't go under, but in order to, to, to understand what kind of schedule premium we need to put on the fee for our services, this, this you need this, something like this spreadsheet. So, and I'm sure there's different ways to do this. I'm, I'm going to show you how we do it. Okay, so what we have over here is the proposal number. Could also be a job number, um, and and some of these projects are for, uh, I should say, most of these projects are for regular clients. Um, so this this doesn't include like the land title surveys and uh, fire drills that just kind of drop on our lap. So most of what's in the spreadsheet is work with with the half a dozen or so clients that we've got a good long-term relationship with. And so sometimes we find out, you know, we, we know stuff is on the radar, um, maybe 60 days out or 90 days out because the client tells us we haven't done a proposal yet. And so in that case, uh, they, they won't get a proposal. So that's what goes here. And, you know, we, we don't do a great job of keeping up on this. So, for example, that's got a job number now, uh, this job in Groveland. But uh, anyway, so you got your proposal number here. Well, it could be a job number if we're doing a change order or extra services, additional services. Uh, the job, the proposal name or job name goes here. Um, and really, a, a better way, a better way for this, we should just call it opportunity name because not all these turn into proposals. Okay, then we put a, we assign a confidence level. You know, how confident are we that we're going to get the work based on our relationship with the client and their relationship with their client, and uh, you know how aggressive we were on our price. That kind of thing. Uh, then the status. Okay, so our, did we give the client an initial fee and we're waiting for them to ask for a proposal, or we or have we given them a proposal? We're waiting for notice to proceed, or we've won the work and we're waiting to go to con you know we're waiting to start the work. We've got the contract. 
and we put in what we think the dollar amount of the opportunity will be. We usually know that number. Um, sometimes this is an estimate, but usually, you know, if we've done a proposal or a fee estimate, we certainly know what this number is. And then what we do here, this is probably the most important, is we take the confidence level times the dollar value, and we get the weighted value because we're we're not going to get all this work, right? Um, you know, I don't know. Typical, I've heard a typical hit rate on proposals for the for the serving industry is about thirty percent. Uh, it's probably somewhere between twenty and thirty percent. Um, our hit rate tends to be a little higher. Uh, we're probably we probably have a fifty percent hit rate, maybe a sixty percent hit rate. That's partly because we're, we're very picky about who we work for and who we give proposals to, but we're a little bit unique like that. A lot of firms aren't like that. All right, so we've got a, <clears throat> let me just show you how this works. We'll just take a few minutes and update this. So I've got, this is a subdivision we're working on in Brentwood. Um, we've got some pretty gnarly conditions back from the city, so I'm not, I'm not sure if this is going to go forward. So it's got a fairly low confidence level, so I'm putting it in at 25%. It's about 15 grand way work. Uh, we got a school coming up. Um, I suspect that at, right now I had it in at zero because it because it was it was way out. It was like four months out. We got put in here, but it's probably coming. Uh, we're getting close. I think they said maybe May. I think I think the engineers are running a little behind. I'll put it in at fifty percent. Uh, Division Road. This is actually we're waiting on the landowner um, and the attorney. They're probably going to sue their neighbor. Uh, the neighbor doesn't want to want to pay for their share of the lot line adjustment, so it's getting kind of messy. I'm going to drop that to 20. Uh, this is a subdivision we've got going in Modesto here. Um, I talked to the engineer this week, and they think they're getting they're getting close to starting that work. So I'm going to bump that up to 80. Uh, this is some drafting we've got for some subdivision maps. <clears throat> I tuned up the estimate on that, so I'm going to increase that estimate. Uh, this job of Groveland we got, and we're actually under contract and doing the work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that out, right? Because we already have that. Um, these annexations we got are still coming up. We're pretty sure we're going to get those. Um, I'm going to make that 90. Uh, we got some uh, corner records we're doing for AT&T. Um, and we have that work. It just needs to be scheduled. We actually got a new job for these guys. Uh, I'm probably going to put that in at 12. So uh, that's that's an on-call contract that we did some work out of pretty regularly. River Oaks is on hold. I've got it in there at 50. Uh, Bellevue Ranch North, we've got some land descriptions and plats to do. Um, so this this changed a little bit. We we got some of this work. We did we did a couple thousand dollars of it, but the rest of it's kind of on hold, and I don't know when it's going to kick. So I'm going to leave it in here. Um, this number's probably going up. I'm going to leave it in here, but I'm going to zero it out for now. Um, we're still waiting on NTP for this. I know it's going to go. I'm going to drop it down because I don't know when. Uh, this is coming still. This is done. This is a community facility search exhibit we did. I can pull that out. Uh, this is a sub that we're waiting here on an out water. I've got it at zero. Uh, this went, uh, but we haven't started work yet, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it in here. We're cleaning up a little parcel map. A client. Uh, G Street, uh, the client's screaming at me for that. Uh, we haven't started work yet, but we're go, so I'm going to leave it in there. Uh, these are a couple subdivisions that are just on the radar, so I'll leave them in there at 70. Um, these are both uh, subdivision maps we've got coming up that I, that I know we're going to get. We've got a general plan amendment coming up. Uh, we've got a so this is this thing in Augustine is actually going to need a boundary survey and a land description and plat uh, for an easement in addition to the annexation. So I don't know. This is probably going to be twelve grand, and we're supposed to start that anytime. Um, yeah, I'm probably gonna. This is gonna this is gonna bump up, I think. Okay, so oh, I'm trying to think if I have any new work that's not in here. I can't think of anything right now. Let me just check my notes. So you know, one thing one thing we're supposed to do when we when we come in here is we're supposed to update this. All right, I don't think I have any new work yet. To put it in here. So, uh, 
you can see what this tells us is uh, down, down below here we total this up, right? So right now I've got roughly $230,000 worth of uh, worth of proposals and fee estimates out. Okay, which for us is a big number. I know it's a small number for a lot of companies, but for us that's a, that's a pretty big number. So here's our weighted value. Um, you know, I told you we're, we tend to be 50% or more, and uh, you can see that here. We're, we're, we're way above 50%. We're probably 65%. So I'm pretty sure this number right here, this 145000 is what, we, what we've got on the books for the next 30 to 60 days. Okay, now that's not the most important number in the spreadsheet. Is important, but it's not the most important. This is the most important number. Because what we do is we take our typical payroll for a week, and then we divide that into this number here. And that gives us a rough idea how many weeks of work we have for our current team that's you know, very high confidence work, right? So this does, again, this doesn't count the stuff that just comes in, phone calls that come in on a, on a weekly basis for land title surveys and topos and people that you know, are on you know, their projects on fire. And uh, this number actually might be a little bit high um, I can't remember for that high. It might be that high. So what this what this means is I'm running. Um, this is a thirty thousand dollars available work. Okay, that's that's not direct labor cost. Now that's at the at the hourly rate, right? You got to remember these numbers are at your hourly rate. So this isn't. This $30,000 here isn't my direct labor. That's not what I'm paying out in payroll. That's what I'm trying to bill every week. Okay, and so you can see I have a problem here, right? And this is the whole point of this spreadsheet because what this tells me is for my current team, I have five, five man weeks of work. Okay, and that's way too much. Uh, that's two and a half times what I like to have because <laughs> we're we're really busy like everybody else. Um, so what this what this tells me as a manager is um, I probably need to, you know, for, for work that I need to do two things right now. I need to be more picky about the work I take. So I'm probably not taking a bunch of work for new clients because I need to take care of the clients I already have. And uh, if I do take on work for a new client, um, it's not going to be cheap, right? I, I need to price it high. And um, even some work, I, work that I do for my existing clients uh, probably needs to be, um, you know, I, I need to be realistic about my pricing without gouging my clients because right now I've got too much work and I'm probably going to disappoint somebody, right? So uh, a lot of firms are okay with this backlog. You know, they don't mind running a six, six week or a 12 week backlog, but that's just not how our business model is set up. So, you know, depending on your company, you, you might be okay with this number. This is not okay for our age. So um, part of what we've done to address this is um, uh, we've hired a couple new people. So uh, in less than two weeks I've got two new guys starting so let me show you what that does okay so I've got a couple of new guys starting and uh, we actually just we started working with a project we hired a project coordinator okay so this number this billable number now is, is gone has gone up so it's gone up from 30 from 30 grand to 46,000 because I added two two full-time people fairly high level people and so you can see what that does is that that helps right I just knocked off a week and a half almost two weeks off my off my uh, backlog. Okay, now, it's still not where I want to be, right? Um, I, I still like, I would like this to be down to two weeks. And um, I don't I don't know that I have any more people I can hire. <laughs> That's all in the same boat everybody else is. So I uh, probably can't do a whole lot about this number other than, you know, raise my prices, make sure I'm working for the right people. And, you know, I got to be really careful, careful here because uh, what what happens pretty quickly is, you know, a couple of these numbers that were that were uh, zero go to 100% because we get some stuff come in the door, and uh, you know, before you know it, uh, I'm, I'm I'm double my I'm pushing four weeks now again, double what I want, right? Um, so and then, you know, the nice thing is you can play around with those numbers a little bit and, and just undo your changes. Um, so there you go. That's what a proposal workload forecast does for you. Kind of gives you an idea, not only of the dollar volume, but uh, the, the number of man weeks you have for your current team. Again, you know, the numbers you plug in here. So these, these numbers are usually known. You know, this is the tricky part, right? Putting in your confidence level. And yeah, we, we're getting better at it over time. Uh, but uh, some, 
some guess is probably better than no guess. I don't know how many companies do something like this, but this uh, this really helps us price and prioritize work. So I know that video went a little bit long, but I hope you guys enjoyed watching that, and I hope there's some land surveyors and land planners and engineers out there that'll uh, learn a little bit about uh, how to manage their their workload and their cash flow uh, from this video. And we'll we'll do some more. We'll do some more videos just uh, about cash flow management, kind of money management for small business owners. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it.